Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. This week we're going to be talking about basses. We're going to start by looking at types of basses. You've got slightly more plain ones that complement the mini, but aren't necessarily that interesting by themselves. These generally allow the mini to shine more than the bass. I'll leave these for armies where the colour scheme of the model is more important than what they're standing on. Stuff like White Scars, Custodies and Templars are perfect for this. Next up we have contrasting and complementary basses. These are generally a lot more vibrant and tie the mini into a world that they're standing in. Whether that's a salamander on a bright lava world that contrasts against his armour, or a sister in a sanctorum with trees and plants growing around her. This can also include the use of more interesting effects like object source lighting that you see here. The colours are a bit more vibrant, they contrast more with the minis, but they don't overpower. The final base we're covering are those really vibrant ones. They can tie in with the mini, but often they're a little bit more interesting to look at than the mini itself. In some situations, most situations, this isn't what you want, but for armies that have a bit more of a boring colour scheme, like black or grey, these are a great option. But today, we're going to be covering the more simple style of base. Let's build one together, and as we build it, we'll talk about options that are available to us. I'm going to use this big 60mm base as the subject today because it's massive and has loads of room for detail if we want to add it. It's often good to start with a base layer of texture. Now, Games Workshop do some excellent texture paints, but they're very expensive, so I recommend using Vallejo or AK. Why these? They're about £10 a pot, and generally you get a lot more use out of them. Also, you can fit bigger tools like palette knives inside. If you want to change the base colours they come in, or you have a plain one, you can use some cheap acrylic paint, like these here, to mix up your own colours. If texture paste isn't really your jam, or you're just not feeling it today, you can use texture rollers. These are two from Green Stuff World. The one I'm showing you now is just a plain one that is used to roll out putty completely flat, and then you can follow that up with a textured roller like the cobblestone one behind. The type of putty that these work best with is honestly brown stuff, which comes from Green Stuff World. How odd. You can end up with a really nice effect like you see here on this sister of Battle Base. My main advice would be though, make sure that both the putty and the roller are completely soaked in water. It stops them getting stuck together and saves you a bunch of time. You can also include other elements like cork and trees and tufts, which we'll come on to later. If you're going for a smoother finish or a water type effect, you can use Mod Podge. This is a hobbyist best friend, it can be used as glue, it can be used to texture things, I highly recommend picking up a pot. You can see it used to good effect here on this Blood Angels Chaplin base. After a couple of layers of texture and a little dry brush at the end, it looks just like water. I also use some thin wire covered in Mod Podge to make these little splashes. There are other great options like pre-mixed water effects and UV resin, but we'll cover those on another day. Back to our basing project, I'm going to keep it simple and use this AK Dark Earth paste. It looks like soupy chocolate ice cream, so I spent the entire time hungry and trying not to eat it. When it comes to adding texture to large bases, I like to use this palette knife. It's just a cheap little tool from my local hobby store, and I do recommend picking one up if you're going to be doing a lot of basing. Now, depending on what you're doing, you can leave it to dry here, but I'm actually going to use this to my advantage and help glue down a few bits of cork that I've cut up. Keeping the paste wet means that these cork pieces are going to stick in nicely without adding loads of extra glue. The effect I'm going for here is a flagstone styled street, and I'm going about that by cutting up some cork placemats that I bought for cheap. You can find these at Ikea, on Amazon, wherever. I've decided for this one I don't want a fully uniform base, so I'm not going to cover the entire area in these little bricks. I'm going to cover about half and then make a few damaged ones that lead down to the texture paste. Whilst keeping it a very simple base, it does mean there's a little bit more character. To help facilitate that effect, I took my last couple of bricks and ripped them apart with my hands. You can also use your knife tools here, just to make it look like it's crumbling into the rest of the road. With those flagstones added, that's the main effort complete. The next steps are super easy. I grabbed some large stones from this pot. I highly recommend keeping a few pots of stones around, of various sizes, from slightly larger pebbles and rocks all the way down to sand. It's a very quick and easy way to decorate bases, terrain, honestly whatever you can think of, and if you get it from your garden, it's completely free. For this project, I'm going from pebbles to gravel to sand. This gives me a nice natural gradient and adds a bit more character to the base, more rubble, tells a bit more of a story. Specifically for the gravel and sand application, I put a baking tray that I spray all my minis on underneath so it didn't get all over my hobby desk. All our various pebbles and rocks applied, it's time to seal them. And the best way to do this is to mix PVA glue with water in a roughly 50-50 ratio, so not as thin as I'm doing here. I poured this mixture into a little dropper bottle with this handy little funnel that I had lying around. As mentioned, I added a little bit more PVA because that was too thin, and then I prepped the base with isopropyl alcohol that I keep in this little atomizer. An atomizer is just a fancy word for a small spray bottle. Get one, they're cheap and useful. 
The isopropyl alcohol is a really essential step because it reduces the surface tension, meaning that my PVA glue mix is going to run into all the nooks and crannies nicely. I did two rounds of PVA glue here just to make sure it's set rock solid. With that complete, I primed the base. As this is more of an understated base, I decided to paint it really simply. I got a large dry brush and used Moot Green directly over the black primer. The next and final stage of painting is to mix in some pallid witch flesh to my moot green and add a few extra highlights in key areas. And as simple as that, our base painting is done. You could go into more detail, but I decided against it. Again, this is an understated base, so the mini's the prime focus. Of course, there are decorations to do. Now, there's a few ways in which you can decorate your bases, and the main and simplest one are tufts. You can get loads of different types, plain ones, blue ones, red ones, pink ones, you can get flowers, you can get pink flowers, you can get a clump of purple flowers. You can get these weird fuego ones that look very cool and these neon ones that really suit my vibe and turns out they were meant for me because this looks like a little S for Sam or so on. These tufts were all from Game of Grass. You can also use packs of Woodland Scenics Lichen. This is a really simple way to not only base your minis but decorate your tables. Another great way to add some colour and effects to your bases is to use pigments. They're great for adding dust effects, soots, and these two from Ab Thai Lung are excellent, but Vietnam Earth is always going to be my favourite. This one in particular is great for a blasted wasteland, as seen on Corsaro Khan earlier. Yeah, him. You can also get brighter pigments like this lapis lazuli, and some darker ones like this black one and mix them together to make your own. Just use a tin lid or a mason jar lid and a nice flat brush like this one here to mix them together and stab them onto the models. Honestly, a stabbing effect is probably the best because more pigment hits the model. Just varnish before you do it. For our base though, we're going to avoid all that and go straight for some Green Stuff World Autumn Leaf Litter. This stuff is absolutely excellent for adding a bit of contrasting colour to this green base. I'm using Mod Podge as my glue layer and then just dropping the leaves like I dropped the rocks on the base earlier. You can put as much or as little of these as you like. I'm being fairly generous, but also being picky with where a couple of the leaves are going. Tweezers are a great tool here. And with the leaves added, that's our base done. Hopefully this little walkthrough, talk through has been helpful for you just to give you maybe a few more ideas on how to base your minis and how vibrant you go and whether you do contrasting or complementary colors. Ultimately, whatever you decide to do, as long as you like it, that's all that matters. But I hope these tips help. As for what I'm putting on this base, that's next week's problem. Anyway, that's been another video. Thank you once again for watching. I've been Sam. See you next time.